to need Microsoft SQL Server. You're going to use SQL Server 2008. In order to acquire SQL Server 2008 and the machine a VM to run it in, we're going to use Microsoft's uh, free VMs. So if you go to this website, um, developer.microsoft.com, we're going to download the IE10 Windows 7 VM. And we're going to do it for VMware since we're using VMware. Once you select these two, you'll be able to click download.zip. And it's going to download a zip file that contains your, uh, your new VM. Once the download completes, you'll see your, your zip file. You're going to right click on the zip file and extract it. And once you extract it, you'll see this folder, which will have a couple files in it. At this point, you'll open up VM Player. You're going to click on Player, File, and you're going to click on Open. And you're going to go into the folder that contains those files that you unzipped, and you're going to click on the .ovf file. Once you click on that, it's going to start importing your VM. This may take a little bit of time. So while this is importing, we can download some other files we're going to need. First, we're going to need Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 Express. So you can go to Microsoft's website, and I'm going to select English for mine. And you're going to select the correct version for your operating system. If you're not sure on the version, you can wait until your virtual machine is installed, and I'll show you how to check your architecture in the virtual machine. In addition to SQL 2008 R2 uh, Express, we're also going to need Management Studio Express, and you're going to need the AdventureWorks database, which you can find on my website. In Lab 6, I have a link to download the AdventureWorks database. So once the import is complete, you will see your new machine in VM Player. So here I have mine, IE10 Win 7. And if I right click, I can go to Settings, and I can see information about my virtual machine. Uh, for example, you may need to know where this is stored in order for you to save it. So for example, mine is stored here on my C drive, but you will want to copy this to your removable drive if you're using a removable drive on a lab workstation. So again, you'd want to copy this to your uh, to the removable drive before you start this. Um, however, I'm going to run mine right off of my C drive, so I'm not going to move the virtual machine. So once you're ready, you're just going to click the play button, and it should start up our virtual machine running Windows 7. Okay, so my virtual machine has started. So once it starts up, my VM uh, forced a reboot because it had to change something. So I'm just waiting for my reboot. Okay. It looks like I'm back. I'm just waiting for this to, uh, get, there we go, I've got a start menu. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just to make sure I, I know what it is, I'm gonna set my, uh, my password, the administrator password. So if I right click on computer and go to manage, I'm gonna go into local users and groups I'm going to go into Users, and I'm going to set the password for Administrator. So I'm just going to set it to something that I'm going to remember. So I'm just going to set mine to capital P9SSW0RD. So it's capital P9SSW0RD, um, just so I remember it. And since I set the password, I am going to log in with that user account. So I'm going to log off. And I'm going to change users. I forgot to turn on quick user switching, so I have to log back in. 
Um, so if you do have to log in as the IE user, it's going to be password uh, bang. You'll see it here in the password hint. Let me put that password in. So in order to allow the administrator to log in, we're going to right click on the command prompt, run as administrator. And we have to type the net user administrator active yes. And this will allow us to log in with the administrator account. All right. So take a note of that command, net user administrator forward slash active colon yes. This will allow you to log in as administrator, which we already set the password for. So now I'm going to log off. Now I can log in as administrator, which I said is P9SSW0RD. So as I mentioned before, we'll need to know which architecture we have to download the other components. So if you right click on computer and click properties, it tells us right here that we are using 32 bits. So under system, we see the system type and it's a 32 bit operating system. So when we download all the tools that we need for this course, we're gonna make sure we use the 32 bit version in this, uh, in this VM. So if you haven't already done so, you're gonna download the 32 bit versions. So SQL Express 86 is the 32 bit version of, version of uh, SQL. So I'm gonna click next to download this one. So that's going to begin downloading. I also need SQL Management Studio Express for 2008. Again, I'm going to pick the x86 version because this VM is a 32-bit version. And I'm going to click Next. And this should begin downloading. So I've got my two files downloading. Once these download, I'm going to copy those to my VM. Okay, so in my case, the uh, my download is now complete. You can see I have my two files. So here are the two files I need. To copy them to your VM should be pretty simple. You're just going to highlight them. So I'm going to hit Control C, but you can also right click and hit copy, whatever works for you. You go into your VM. I'm going to open up my file explorer. I'm going to go into my C drive. I'm just going to drop it right into the root of C, um, but you can put them anywhere you like. So you just right click and paste. And because we have the VM tools included with this VM, it's able to copy the files directly. And then as we work on assignments and things, it's useful to uh, copy and paste into the VM. All right. So it'll take a second here for these to show up. All right, so the first step, the first thing we need to do is install SQL Express. You do not want to install Management Studio first. We're going to install SQL Express first. So I'm going to double click on that. It may take a moment for this to pop up, but if you, if you wait for it when it's done extracting all the files, this is going to pop up. Uh, we are going to do a new installation or add features. So it's the first option up here at the top. So I'm going to click on new installation. Okay, like everything else, first we have to agree to the license terms. So I'm going to hit the checkbox. Uh, 
again, I'm still waiting for the next step. This takes a little time. Okay, finally popped up. Um, so you want to install the database engine services and SQL client connectivity. So that's good. And at the bottom here, I'm going to leave this set to C program files, Microsoft SQL server. So that's fine. I'm going to click on next. Okay, the instance name, I'm going to leave SQL Express as the instance name. You could put something else if you want to, but uh, I'm just going to keep it standard here for this class. Uh, so we'll leave that as it is. Okay, and also we can leave these as they are. It's going to use the NT network service logon. Um, so we can leave that the way it is. No need to change that. When we get to this screen where it asks you for the authentication, we're going to talk about this in unit, um, unit 8 and 9. But for right now, you're going to select mixed mode. And for your password for SQL, I would make it the same as your administrator account, um, just so it's easy to remember. So whatever you normally use for your uh, administrator accounts. And we're just going to keep clicking Next. Now it's going to start installing. And again, this is going to take a little time. So you're going to have to wait for the installation to finish. Okay, looks like my installation's about done. So I'm gonna click close. Next, I need to run Management Studio Express. However, before I do that, I wanna show you how to start your SQL Server uh, database engine. So you're gonna do that with services. So I'm gonna go down here to the start menu. I'm gonna type services. MSC. Anytime you're going to do some labs using the database engine, you're probably going to have to go in here and make sure that the service is started. And in some cases, you might have to restart it if it's a VM. Uh, sometimes if you're, if you're resuming a VM that was paused or something like that, uh, you might have to go in and start the services. So you're going to click on services when it comes up. And in the list here on the right, we're going to look for SQL or SQL server. And it should say Express in it. When I use services, I prefer the standard view, so I'm going to look, uh, switch to standard. And I'm going to scroll down to the S's, and there's my SQL Express. And you can see that it's running. So this is exactly what I want. I want to make sure that's running. If you have to restart it, you just click on it, and you hit the Restart Service button up here. I'll just show you what that looks like now. And it's restarted. So my service is running. Next, I'm going to run the Management Studio uh, Express installer. Take a second again to extract all the files, so you're going to have to wait for it. And it's going to look rather similar to the previous installer, just like before. It may take a while for the installer window to pop up after it runs that uh, operation that extracts all the files. So it'll take a couple seconds. Okay, so when we get in here, we want to click on the installation button. So you're going to click on installation. And in this list here, we are going to select the first one, New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add-on Features. Okay, so this should run. This just checks for errors. I'm going to click OK. All right, first we have to install the support files. This will take a minute or two. OK, we've got a couple warnings here, but nothing crazy. So we should be able to just click Next.
we're going to add features to existing instance. So in this case, SQL Express. So on some systems, you may have to leave this set. So if you select Add Features to Existing and nothing happens, um, just run the installer again, and you'll come back in here and select Perform a New Installation of SQL Server 2008. Um, we're going to specify free edition that should be already selected. Um, you're going to accept the license agreement here. We are going to select uh, Management Tools and Connectivity SDK, and that's it. And you're going to click Next. All right, looks like we meet the requirements for disk space on mine. I'm going to click Next. Then I'm going to click on Next. Let this run. Click Next. And finally, we're ready to install. This is going to, again, take a minute or two for this to run. Okay, it looks like we're about done. And that's it. So now we can close the installer. And now if we go into programs, we should see SQL Server 2008 R2 and a SQL Server 2008. We're going to click on Management Studio. All right, and once this pops up, it should automatically come up with your um, the host name, the server name. So this is our server's host name. And then this is the instance name of the database that we're going to use. I'm going to switch to SQL Server Authentication. So initially, it's on Windows Authentication. This should work. In fact, we can try it. And if your system is like mine, you should uh, it should take a second, but it's going to connect. And then... Let's open up databases. And of course, we have no databases yet, but that's it. So we now have SQL Management Studio installed, uh, as well as our database engine. So, uh, and we're going to be creating databases later on, but for right now, uh, we need to create a sample database, and that's going to be the AdventureWorks database. So, first, you have to go download the AdventureWorks database. Let me show you on my web page. So, if you go to my web page for the course, you're going to scroll down to Unit 6 and click on Unit 6, Lab 6.1. And then just click on AdventureWorks. And that's going to download the AdventureWorks database. It's not very large, so it should download relatively quickly. Once that downloads, we're going to unzip that. Okay, so mine finished downloading. Here it is right here. I'm going to right-click and extract it. All right, and then I'm going to copy these two files to my database server. I'm going to highlight both of them. I'm going to go into my VM. I'm going to go to a specific folder, and you should do the same on yours. I'm going to go into the C drive, and if you recall, we installed our database engine to program files, and then Microsoft SQL Server. You want to go into MSSQL 1050 SQL Express. MSSQL data. So this is where we're going to put those files.
Okay, so now I've got my AdventureWorks uh, database files in here, but now we have to tell SQL Server about those files. So I'm going to go back to my Management Studio. I'm going to right click on databases. So again, I'm going to click on databases. I'm going to right click and click attach. We're going to attach those files to our database server. So I'm going to click add. Now, assuming you put those files in the same location I put mine, you should see it here right under data. You may have to go to a different folder if you uh, copy them somewhere else. Uh, but mine falls right in where it's supposed to in the data folder. That's why I copied it there. It's the default location for the database files for our instance of SQL. So I'm going to highlight AdventureWorks data.mdf. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK again. And it should attach the database. Once that dialog goes away, we should be able to hit the little plus sign. And now we can see AdventureWorks. So this concludes the installation of SQL Server and Management Studio, as well as the uh, attachment of the AdventureWorks database, which we're going to use later on uh, for both Labs 1, 6, and 7.